Hi everyone, it's Will Sachs here from Healing From Inside, and I'm here with Ivan Starowerski. Ivan is an NLP trainer, he's a member of the American Psychological Association, and an alternative health consultant. So thanks, Ivan. Hi, Will. Hi there. Thanks so much for giving us some of your time this morning. Always glad to help and share information with the audience and with people like you for doing this, for spreading the word out and for informing other people. Great. Uh, so first I wanted to just ask you to introduce yourself and... Uh, Talk a little bit about how you, you got into this, this, this whole field, field to say. Uh, well, to begin with, maybe I can start from uh, my high school experience. When I was in high school, uh, like most teenagers who are finishing high school, so I wasn't, wasn't really into reading books and stuff, you know, wasn't really into science, more about video games, more about hanging out with friends. Until one day, my mother, she gave me a book, a book called Body Language by Alan Pease. Mm. And the most interesting thing about this book was that it had pictures in it. So it was just not words, but I had pictures. You can actually read and you can see what they were talking about. And it was, it's one of the most famous books. I highly recommend this book to everybody. If you're interested in body language, just to you know, understand people, how they think uh, through their body, mm -hmm. how they talk, and what happens on the nonverbal language. And basically what happened for me was I read something and I decided to try it out. And I was riding on the subway, uh, TDC riding just one day, and I decided to try something. And that technique was mirroring, that basically establishing rapport with somebody else. Mm. Uh, basically, what I did was I was copying somebody. I picked somebody who was sitting in front of me, uh, who was just you know, browsing around, looking at the uh, advertising, or maybe occasionally looking at the newspaper. And I started to copy all the gestures of that person for about five or six minutes. And after about five or six minutes, I got into a rapport. I started breathing the way that person was breathing. I started moving uh, the way that person was moving. He wasn't conscious to paying attention to me, but with his uh, peripheral vision, he saw me. Mm. And basically, in about uh, five or six minutes, I started to leave. I started to change things. I started to move in a certain way, and the person began to copy me. So I went this way, and he went this way. I went like this, and about a second or two, he went this way. I went like this, and then he went like this. And for me, it triggered something, whoa, this is cool, this is interesting, there is something in it, something that actually works. And I started reading this whole um, uh, positive thinking uh, field, you know, Brian Tracy, Anthony Robbins, uh, Zig Ziglar, um, Napoleon Hill, uh, Thinking yeah. for Rich, all of these guys, and really was fascinated about this whole thing. Until one day I was introduced to NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. I really had no idea what it was back at the time, but it sounded really cool. I looked at, uh, into it a bit more, and I uh, really was fascinated by how cool, interesting, and applicable and practical this whole thing is. And I was really, really excited to finish my high school, go to York University, and begin my psychology program. Mm. And when I got into York University, I studied there for a bit, uh, for some time, and I got disappointed. I really got disappointed because when I started talking to my professors, about practical solutions, about what the linguistic programming is and how you can do things. They had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> like, zero. It was just the textbook, it was the rats, it was uh, the conventional approach to psychology. Nothing outside the box. No left, no right, nothing else. And I really didn't like this whole thing. And uh, basically I dropped out because that was, that really didn't resonate with me. I wanted to search for something else and wanted to uh, you know, find something different. And I dropped out, I was browsing around, wondering here and there, maybe going to homeopathy, uh, because it was really interesting, that what helped me out back at that time, mm -hmm. I, I had uh, my personal issues. Um, tried some other things, and eventually I really got into the field of NLP, New Linguistic Programming. I went to Colorado, started with some of the uh, original authors, some of the original guys, like Charles Faulkner, Steve Andreas, and then eventually I went to see Richard Bender, who was the original uh, co-creator of Unreal Linguistic Programming, studied with him. And then got into this um, whole field of, you know, consulting people. Plus my parents, they're doctors, so I kind of grew up in this whole uh, field of medicine, alternative healthcare, uh, psychology, health, uh, nutrition, um, a whole approach to health. Mm. Um, got up to my uh, trainer's level in Unreal Linguistic Programming, and the next logical step for me would be to go back to university and get my degree in psychology. Mm. So that's where I am now, I'm finishing this up. And uh, basically while I'm doing this, although I'm not officially treating people, I'm consulting and I've been consulting people since 2004 
on various problems. And uh, I've basically gained a lot of knowledge from all over the world. I just collect things, whether it's Russia, US, I don't know, Ukraine, England, whoever has practical solutions to real life problems. I collect those things and we put those together and uh, I put those together and give, give it to people so that they can uh, start making changes. Ah, that's interesting. So neuro-linguistic programming, how, I'm familiar with, with it on a very basic mm -hmm. level. Maybe you could define it and speak just briefly about how okay. it relates to health. Well, basically, neuro-linguistic programming is basically a study of subjective experience. Uh, neuro stands for the brain, as for our neurology in the brain. Linguistics stands for the language that we use, not just verbal, but also nonverbal. And the programming is basically programming, but this is not hypnosis. This is not like you put somebody and you program them. It's about changing your subjective experience so that you can start making changes in your life, whether it's health, whether it's uh, personal freedom, whether it's positive thinking, whether it's your attitude, whether it's confidence, whatever it is, by subjectively changing things inside uh, the structure of your neurology of the brain, how you think and perceive things through language, that is including visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, you can change your own experience. And one of the greatest things that I like about neurolinguistic programming is that it's based on successful people, whether it's from business, from healthcare, from sports. What they did, the original co-creators of NLP, original authors, Susan Bandler and John Brinder, they took successful people, the ones who, let's say, for example, psychology. Unlike the traditional psychological approach, you don't take a bunch of people who have the problem and study them. You take the people who got over the problem, let's say, phobias, and you find the structure behind the experience. How specifically did they do this? How is it possible? What did they do inside their mind? Maybe something on the outside, maybe something on the inside. What did they do? And then you model this and you give it to other people so they can do it too. Wow, that's interesting. So it comes to me that illness is a real example of subjective experience because I, if I have an illness, I'm experiencing it for myself. Nobody else can experience my illness. So I can see how NLP would, would meet with illness. Uh, yes, you're right. And I think that this is the point where we're going to have to kind of define what's the difference between a somatic approach and a psychosomatic approach and what is a psychosomatic approach to illness and what the word psychosomatic stands for. Because uh, some people might have heard of this before, but they're not sure what it is. Some people are probably wondering, what the hell are we talking about? What is yes. psychosomatic word that I mentioned?